So now we want to prove this descent theorem. So suppose there is a height function on our points. So we are writing this uh, CQ that is the all the rational points on the curve. They form a group under addition law and then you denote that by gamma. So on these rational points you put this small height function. So you take a point on the curve you assign to it h of p. And we have seen in the previous lecture this lies between 0 and infinity. So this has the following four properties. The first is that all the points whose height is bounded they are finite. The second is that for given any point p0 on the curve and here we are writing gamma for the group corresponding to the curve you have height of p plus p0 this is less than or equal to twice the height plus kappa 0 for all points and number three is that if you double the point it actually becomes four times the height of the original point minus something kappa for all points on the curve and fourth is this index uh, gamma over 2 gamma is finite. So then gamma is finitely generated. So we talked about this in detail in the last lecture. In this lecture we have these four conditions. Using these four conditions we are going to prove this theorem that this group gamma is finitely generated. So that is all the points on this rational curve are finitely generated because all these points on the rest this cubic curve or non-singular cubic curve form the group. So let us start with this condition 4. We are saying this index is finite. So let this index be n and obviously you are quotienting out with the subgroup 2 gamma then uh, you have some coset representatives. So let q1, q2 all the way to qn be the corresponding coset representatives because there are n cosets here. So these are finite number of coset representatives. So thus for any element p and uh, gamma that is p lying on the curve p obviously lies in some coset so there is a some index i1 say which depends upon p and from p if you uh, subtract q i1 then it will lie in 2 gamma so notice that this q i1 is actually one of these representatives so from here p you select q i1 you will lie in 2 gamma or in other way you can write it as is p minus q i1 is equal to 2 p1 because elements of 2 gamma is just twice the points. So notice that we are not doing anything special here. We are just using the property of cosets. So if you have forgotten about cosets, so just use integers and then z over 5 z. So focus on integers and say example of z over 5 z and you know the cosets here. Uh, are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So any z here you can bring it to 0 by adding a point from the coset. So for example if you pick 23 here then you can always add 2 from here to bring it to 0. So this p1 lies in gamma so 2 p1 lies in 2 gamma. So again this q i j is anything here is chosen from our coset representatives. So we have this thing here. So p minus q i1 is equal to 2 p1. So this part we are saying lies in 2 gamma because you have a 2 here. Now we did this procedure for p. We can repeat this for p1. So now you can say p1 minus q i2. Again this q i2 you are choosing from one of these elements here. This will be equal to 2 p2 some other point and then you can repeat this procedure uh, like this. So you can uh, get point you start with point p then you get p1 p2 p3 and so on so what we want to show is that they will have a decreasing height and even eventually this will uh, get smaller and smaller we will get a height which will complete the proof because we'll get some bounded height if you get a bounded height then you get the points are finite so we have to still show this but that's the idea essentially this is a descent procedure you keep going on and on further and further and the height should keep decreasing. So notice that this is the first equation here. So this equation is taken just right here. Now this p1 here, you substitute it here. So here p1 you can see is nothing but 2p2 plus qi2. So you substitute this in here. So you get 4p2 coming right here and 2qi2 coming right here. So this is like this. Now you substitute for p2 from here 
and you continue this process recursively we'll get this p equals to q i 1 2 q i 2 4 q i 3 2 m minus 1 q i m plus 2 m p m so again recall all these things q i 1 q i 2 q i 3 q i m are taken from these coset representatives so p you can say lies in subgroup gamma 1 of our original group gamma so where gamma 1 is generated by all these points here so you can say it is generated by qi1 qi2 qi3 qim but they are again picked from here so you can say that gamma1 is generated by all these qis and this pm now since we are choosing these qijs from here we are going to rewrite this entire thing like this a1 q1 a2 q2 a3 q3 an qn and instead of pm we are going to write it as r so what our strategy is that we want to show this result that this height of this pm or this r is bounded so this we want to show now if height is bounded then you know there are only finite number of points so you see this number one this set is finite so you can say that this point p which lies on our curve or in gamma by this definition then these q1 q2 q3 all the way to qn union with these finite number of points because the height of this r is bounded all the points on the curve whose height is bounded so this is finite and these are finite so these finite number of points generate gamma because they they end up generating every point. Every point is generated by either QIs or finite number like this. So you take all these finite things and they will generate uh, gamma. So all these points which will have height bounded by kappa prime plus kappa, they are finite plus this will generate gamma and that is the end of the finite generation theorem. So the only thing left is to show is this part. So now we will focus on showing this part holds. So to come to the proof of the theorem, we set P0 as minus QI right here. So P0 is minus QI and corresponding you have kappa I. So you will have this equation. So I'm just copying this equation right here for all points on our curve. So you can do this for each coset representatives. So you will have n such equation. You will have one equation for Q1, then for Q2 all the way to QN. So you will have n such kappa so you can set kappa prime as maximum of all these kappas for all these n equations. So for all the equations you will have height of p minus qi is less than equal to 2 h of p. But now instead of kappa i we are writing kappa prime because kappa prime is the maximum of all the kappas. But this will hold for all points on the curve and for all these i's here. So now we copy this, this thing right here. So 4HPJ is less than or equal to 2HPJ plus kappa. But notice that in the previous slide we had this equation. Twice of PJ was equal to PJ minus 1 minus QIJ. So this we were building recursively. So we had, we had equations like this. PJ minus 1 minus Q ij is equal to twice pj and then you have the next equation corresponding to pj and so on so this was getting built recursively so instead of this i'm going to write this but now this this thing right here this looks like precisely like this because this qij is some qi you could after all it is picked from one of these coset representatives so instead of p we just have pj minus 1 so instead of p we have pj minus 1 you take this kappa prime put here this kappa comes as such so now you divide throughout by 4 so h of pj is h pj minus 1 plus kappa, this kappa plus kappa prime by 4 so this we can split it up right 3 by 4 h pj minus 1 minus 1 by 4 h pj minus 1 minus kappa prime plus kappa so now you say h of 
pj minus 1 is greater than kappa prime plus kappa. So let us assume this for a second and uh, later we will show that this, uh, this was a solid assumption. So if this is true then this, this portion is uh, we can write this less than equal to because this portion will be positive this entire thing will be positive. So we can write it as this height of pj is actually less than equal to 3 by 4 hpj minus 1. Now we are conducting as you see these equations we were conducting recursively we were just uh, making them recursively and this 3 by 4 is less than 1 so if you keep doing it recursively this height is going to go to 0. So ultimately if you keep on putting from p you take p1 p2 p3 and so on you will ultimately get h of pm is less than equal to kappa prime plus kappa so that's why we said here h of pj minus 1 is greater than kappa prime plus kappa because it was already less than or equal to kappa prime plus kappa then we would have just stopped right here and this is what we wanted to prove that h of pm is less than equal to kappa prime plus kappa so now we have this result now we finally reiterate what we said before so starting with this we were able to find an index m so that hpm is less than or equal to kappa prime plus kappa as you can see right here so this we found so thus we can write a point p as a1 q1 plus a2 q2 plus a3 q3 all the way to a and q n plus 2 to the power of m r so we can do this for any point p and but the only condition on this r is that this height of r has to be less than or equal to kappa prime plus kappa so if this holds then you have this equation and then now these are the cosets coming right here so this finite index comes from here so this finite index leads to this finitely many cosets which are the elements here and this r leads to this part which says that you have finitely many points here because the height is bounded since the height is bounded there are only finitely many points such that h of r is less than or equal to kappa prime plus kappa so these points so these points along with these cosets they generate all the points because you can put this point r for any p you can change a1 a2 a3 but you can put the same r everywhere because this r satisfies such a condition kappa prime plus kappa as we saw uh, here bef before by the descent argument you can always find a r like this which will satisfy this in any case um, once you have a bound on the height the number of points are going to be finite so for all points you just have a finitely many points like this which will uh, suffice our case and uh, yeah so you have this which generates our group gamma.